Okay. All set, Sean? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Pursuant to section 20 of chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 as amended, board council members are participating remotely in today's meeting because of their physical attendance today would be unreasonably difficult. <clears throat> Excuse me, all port council members in attendance and all members participating in the meeting by Zoom video conferencing app will be clearly audible to each other. As a result, members remote participation in the meeting in any and all votes taken by the members today shall be by roll call vote. I would also like to inform everybody that Sean Driscoll, the authority's communication director, is making an audio and video recording of today's meeting. Is there anyone else making an audio recording of today's meeting? If so, please identify yourself. Okay. Key okay, from the MB Times. You. Yeah. That's all I see. Oh, that's okay, all I see. You. If you are joining virtually, please please press the raise your hand icon on the Zoom dashboard. Or if you're joined by phone, by pressing uh, nine on your keypad. And when you are recognized, please state your name for the record. Thank you. Beginning with item one, the minutes of the meeting. I have a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting. I'll move approval. Do I have a second? second. Mr. Mernia? Aye. How do you vote? Yes. Mr. Lowell? Aye. Mr. Cahill? Cahill, aye. Salido, aye. Number two, the management report update on current projects, including number one, website update redesign. All right, um, so uh, before we start, I'll just mention uh, who's in, or at the highest terminal um, conference room on the second floor. Um, in addition to myself and Terrence Keneally, um, uh, and Rob Muni is here, uh, Sean Driscoll, Mark Higgins, Mark Rosam, uh, Bob Jones, Dave Oberlander, Ryan Cummings, uh, Stephen Coleman, Kurt Van Riper, Allison Fletcher, Janice Kennepick, and Bridget Sullivan. And uh, with regards to the website, I'll turn it over to Sean. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So the Steamship Authority and the company now known as Stellar Elements, formerly known as Project 202, formerly known as ADK Group, they're on their third name, uh, have begun discussions about moving to a fall launch date due to the volume and complexity of the work that's remaining on the project. Large portions of the functionality are complete from a development standpoint, but many items remain to be fully tested and debugged, and much of the remaining work is made up of edge cases that affect a relatively few number of users but are complicated to solve from a technological standpoint. So we're in discussions with them right now. We're going to bring a proposal to the board at the June meeting to finalize the details of the new launch date. Our total project cost project cost stands at 2.5 million uh, to date 96% of the revised budget cost has been spent and uh, we have been ongoing with our public engagement through the e-news and website updates at steamshipauthority.com slash website project. So happy to take any questions. Any questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Chair, may I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Sean, curious, in June, when you present to the, <clears throat> to the board, will there be an increase in the budget? That's part of the discussions that we're having, but yes, we'll need to fund development through the summer. So there will be a change order coming. Do we know the magnitude of that or too early? Um, to we're, we're still having discussions, so I'd rather not put a number out until we're a little bit firmer on it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other questions? Yeah. I have two. Woods uh, Hole. Joe, 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 Joe. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. Rob has a question. Yeah, if you don't mind. Sorry, Joe. It's probably going to be see. tricky. Um, um, so following up uh, on uh, John's question, on, and that's uh, why is the responsibility for steamships as opposed to the provider for this delay? It, it's a multitude of factors. 
um, the including but not limited to the fact that when we started this project, we were also switching credit card processors and it took longer for the web team to get involved in that work than we'd hoped. Also the people who are working on implementing the credit card processing at the terminals and at the reservation office are the same people that we need to implement on the web. So there's a limitation of resources on that front as well as just in general in our IT department of the number of people who can do the programming. So everybody's working really hard. There's just a lot of work to do. And I mean, part of the discussion we're having is how the costs are gonna split out, but there is, you know, it, it is a result of bottlenecks on largely our side, unfortunately. Any other questions? So I, if, if I may, I, I think one of the big things is that um, as, as part of this, as separate from this project, but um, as a consequence, um, we were changing our credit card process of, uh, on who, we, who we're dealing with and the complexities of that. I think um, the rollout of that has taken uh, considerably longer than what we anticipated because of, uh, um, again, uh, resources not on our end, but also on the uh, um, you know, on the programming side. So, um, and that's had a compounded the, the issue with the development of the website that we thought we might be able to overcome, but at this point it, do, it, it, it doesn't appear that we're gonna be able to have the website that we want to have available right out of the box in time for a June rollout, so. And it's substantially less risky to wait until fall because of the volume of traffic on the website <laughs> we wouldn't want to launch over the summer. So if we were not going to make a mid-June date, then fall is the next option. We would not want to launch a website in July or August. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah. And the, you alluded to the there being on their third name change. Does, <laughs> does that have to do with ownership change or does that have to do with just marketing? And yeah. I guess there's you know you, you could infer that there's some inefficiencies associated with this uh, provider changing hands and changing names. They haven't sources well, of the process, but you know, maybe I'm jumping to a wrong conclusion. I think you are, but actually Ben Kaplan is on and he's probably better to speak to that than I am. Ben from Stellar Elements, would you care to speak to the name changes? Hey guys, uh, this is uh, uh, Ben. Uh, looks like I'm audio only. Um, yes, yeah, so, so I, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm cognizant that I'm speaking to an organization um, who has managed to uh, keep keep their name the same since incorporation in 1960, and uh, uh, we've uh, changed our name three different times um, uh, uh, since we engaged. So um, a little bit of a, a backstory on our organization. So uh, up here in Boston, uh, we began uh, in 2010 as a company called ADK, uh, group. Uh, we we grew to about 150 website developers uh, and app developers. In March of 2021, so um, about nine months before we engaged um, with, um, with the Steamship Authority, ADK Group, um, Boston-based, was acquired by Project 202. Project 202 is a larger um, product development company. Uh, and uh, in 2021 and 2022, they were going around the country and going to every major city in the US and trying to find the, you know, the best agency out there around the size of ADK. So, so they bought us up here in Boston, down in Atlanta, they bought a major native app development company called Big Nerd Ranch out in San Francisco. They bought a company called Chibo in Chicago, a company called Aura. The, the, the names don't matter, but Project 202 assembled all of these different companies together. And really the, the story of the last three years, um, uh, really this began um, before we engaged with the Steamship Authority has been one of coming together. Um, you know, uh, so got all these different brands, all these different sort of weird names, 
um, it, the determination was was made um, about um, uh, six months ago that we need a new name that's going to unify all, all these different folks together under one banner. Um, so that's really where the name Stellar Elements comes from. It comes from a process of how do we sort of shed these sort of, sort of old local company names and become one thing. Um, and it's been coupled with a uh, pooling of our delivery talents uh, and expansion of the services we're able to offer because it, as an office, we we can come, you know, we can come together. Um, this unification is reflective of um, some of the work that we've done for the Steamship Authority. Um, you, you know, we, we, we've been able to pull in talented folks from across the country who have a wide variety of skill sets, and it's enabled us to solve some of the challenges we faced um, in really unique and interesting ways that is a hundred person agency called EDK, we, we, we may not have been able to solve so effectively. So um, at a, to um, answer the original question directly, um, this name change does not represent um, any change in ownership structure. Um, it represents, I would say, the the end of a fairly lengthy process that's you know lasted for um, for for us here in Boston um, over three years of unification, coming together, and improving how we deliver our services. Back to you, Sean. Okay. Thanks, Ben. Any other questions? Thank you. Number two, site uh, site work on uh, Woods Hole site work, please. All right. Um, so we don't have any uh, presentation uh, on the site work because uh, the site work uh, is uh, completed at this point. Uh, they had a switch over of the power that had been going into the freight shed um, was switched over to the switch gear shed that's in the employee lot now. So that completed that, that, uh, that portion of the project. Um, the next step is uh, we received filed sub bids for the terminal and utility building construction uh, this past Wednesday, uh, May 31st. In the uh, general contractor bids uh, for the uh, the buildings is due on Tuesday, June 13th. Uh, so uh, that'll be our, our next big thing. Um, at this point, we've sent out 226 community emails regarding the project. We don't, uh, other, other than the, uh, receiving the bids and the award, we don't anticipate any work taking place until the fall. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, number three on the agenda, the SQMS update, please. All right, so um, Bridget Sullivan is here, so uh, we'll have her come up to the table and. Good morning. Um, next slide, please, Sean. <coughs> Oops, great. Okay, very good. So Ty Haynes um, of RENA, he's our rec from our recognized organization, which is certifying our 9001 quality standards portion of our escrow system, has completed our audit. The audit was found satisfactory with no nonconformities. Next slide, please. Ty Haynes did include some feedback in his audit report, most notably how impressed he was of our team from Bob and his commitment to our SQMS system and all the way down to our staff. As stated, we take it, uh, we take safety very seriously, and we are continue, uh, committed to continual improvement of our SQMS system. Next slide, please. Starting tomorrow, we will commence um, with the vessel interim audits, which will then complete the interim phase of the audit process. On Thursday, we'll move forward, forward with the first initial audit, and that will be at our admin building with regards to our written procedures, practices and procedures. Next slide, please. And as you can see, by the end of the month, we hope to complete the initial audit of all vessels that are currently in operation and move forward from there. 
Next slide, please. And just an update with regards to our budgets. This is just a snapshot of the certification process so far. And at this time, we remain within the scope of the bid award with no anticipated concerns. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions from the board? Thank you. Can I just, can I just ask one oh, thing? Sorry, I, didn't it. Uh, yeah. I don't want to, you know, just I'm not trying to make it go longer. Just asking what an audit of a vessel actually means. Like, what does that entail? That's okay to ask. Well, that's definitely okay to ask. So the interim is essentially a 30 minute audit. And so the Rena auditor who will be joining us tomorrow, his name is Aaron. He will be boarding the vessel during the turnaround time. He'll be meeting with the captains. He'll be reviewing the certifications on board. He will be asking for the credentials of all crew members. He will also visit the engine space. And he will be doing the same practice there, ensuring that all the procedures um, that are required to be posted are there and that manuals are also available. For the initial audit, it'll be slightly different. It'll be four to six hours. On vessels leaving from Hyannis, it will be a one trip audit. Vessels leaving from Woods Hole, it will actually encompass two full round trips and it will yeah. be completely um, in depth and will include emergency drills, procedures, and practices, locations of equipment, similar to that of a Coast Guard inspection and capturing um, our SQMS manuals and policies and documentation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Again, thank you. Thank you, Bridget. Item number four, the MV Bonstable and the MV Aquina status. Okay, uh, I think Mark A is coming over. Good morning, everyone. Uh, greetings from Alabama Shipyard. Um, as previously, the uh, Barnstable and Quinter are up on up on the hard on blocks and uh, maybe we can get to the first slide, please. Okay, both of them are side by side at the shipyard um, with, with uh, we got, they're all on blocks in this picture. Next. Okay, this is uh, probably the first stage of what we've begun in the first stage is cleaning and gas freeing all the fuel tanks prior to any hot work. And this will be a commencement here of uh, removal of the uh, deck wood removal. Next slide, please. And this is with the, all the wood is up. I know it doesn't look too, uh, too uh, um, amiable at the moment, but it, the steel underneath is in decent, good condition. And this is just a matter of getting all the fuel fuel oil tank lids up, getting all the fuel out, cleaning and gas freeing prior to, prior to cutting the section of the vessel, the 14 foot section out. And probably our next session will be, once we're clean and gas free, will be a lot more to present, including a financial snapshot, but that's the status as of right now. Any questions? Wow. Can I just ask one, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Mark, sure. I didn't know the decks were wood. That's interesting. Can you explain that? I mean, obviously you understand why they are. I've never... You know, the yeah, they're, uh, you know, these, oh, as OSVs, these would go out to a rig and they have a crane on the rig and they'd be put, placing uh, heavy objects down and it's really to protect the steel underneath. We will not be putting wood back down. These no, are kind of steel, I, obviously. Obviously, I, I know that's what I was going to ask next. So, are we going to create um, some sort of a way to not have like you know air in between the decks so that they corrode, or what are we? How are we going to construct that? Not that it. I mean, I'm sure that there's a plan. I'm just asking. Yeah, we're going to be blasting the decks to uh, near white and beginning our coating programs to uh, protect the steel as we do with all of our vessels. No, I know, I meant, th but there's gonna be obviously a steel deck above that, or is that the actual deck? That's the actual deck. We'll be cutting oh, off that okay. angle iron and uh, that you see yes. there. 
it'll be a completely flat deck. All the all right. manhole covers will be flush. That's part of the conversion. I got it. So that so that is going to be the deck. It's not going to be like new something above it. That's yes. you know like okay. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions of Mark? Yeah, I've got I've got one. Uh, Mark, just curious about your schedule, how the schedule looks, uh, and the productivity of the shipyard. Well, the initial one, we're we're probably right now uh, we're still on schedule, just uh, getting the initial gas spring done before the items are current has us. The vessels being redelivered in uh, early April next year, and then coming up to for training up to Fairhaven thereafter. How about the uh, manpower in the shipyard and just your observations of their? Well, the uh, a lot of the work is with subcontractors. All the matter of fact, all the work right now is with subcontractors. They that's how they have it laid out in this particular dry docking. The supervision is complete with Alabama Shipyard. Just that the the work is a subcontractor. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of Mark? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number five, the strategic plan status. All right, uh, so just a quick uh, update on the progress of the strategic planning initiative. Uh, there was a community open house that was held uh, Monday, May 22nd in the administration building in Falmouth. The following morning, uh, Tuesday the 23rd, uh, there was a session held at the Oak Plus um, Library. And then later on that same day, in, uh, in the evening uh, at the Tisbury Public uh, Safety Building, um, a community open house was then held in, on Wednesday the 24th here in Hyannis. And um, I think the, the last uh, community open house is planned for uh, Tuesday, uh, June 13th, uh, over in Nantucket at the uh, Nantucket Yacht Club. Um, employee surveys, as well as a public survey, uh, remain open until June 30th. So I uh, encourage anyone to uh, go to our website. There's a link there that can be found at steamshipper30.com uh, in order to take the, take the survey and provide uh, feedback in terms of uh, the long-term strategic planning. Any questions of Bob? How do the meetings go? Uh, varying degrees of um, engagement. Um, the ones on the vineyard uh, were uh, well attended. Um, the, um, none of the staff attended. Um, Matillus uh, requested that we don't because they felt that if we were there that it becomes a here and now issue as opposed to the, the bigger issues and things like that. But the, the feedback we've gotten was, uh, um, you know, on the island, it was uh, well received. Um, and we did we did have members of the community, both here in Hyannis and Woods Hole uh, and Falmouth. We expect that Nantucket will have a, um, a, a good turnout as well. So thank you. Yeah, I happen to attend the meeting in Oak Bluffs, and I think John attended the one in Tisbury, and it was very active. People had a lot of questions. and. Uh, it probably could have lasted a little longer. I think some of them would have liked some more time. John, nice job. any other questions? Going down on the uh, center plate uh, contract renewal. All right. Um, so before uh, we begin, I, I'll introduce. So um, here in the uh, the room with us is uh, representatives from uh, Santa Plata or Sodexo, um, Ryan Cummings and Dave Obelanda. Um, so if there's any questions, uh, you can ask them, pepper them with them. But um, basically, um, you know, we've been in discussions with, with uh, Santa Plata uh, regarding the concessions contract. Um, Santa Plata or variations talking about name changes, uh, you know, uh, wow. since the early 1990s. Uh, so they're coming up on 30 years of uh, service on board the authorities' vessels and at the terminals. Um, 
And over that time, um, you know, uh, Center Plate and the authority has worked well together to provide, you know, these services to our customers. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic obviously um, was a significant hurdle to get over. Uh, after we closed, closed down the concessions, um, you know, to reopen them uh, was quite a task. Um, staffing, as is most of the issues on the Cape in particular, um, a challenge as well. Um, but um, the progress that we've been seeing here on um, their services and the being able to be maintaining the uh, uh, staffing at the lunch counters is, is um, you know, taking dramatic steps forward here in the, uh, since the um, 2021 when they first came back on board. So um, what we're looking at is um, Article 6 of their current concession contract includes a provision that unless either party notifies the other by July 31, 2022, which desire to terminate or change any provisions of the agreement, the authority and concessionaire shall promptly thereafter enter into a new agreement, uh, the terms and conditions of which shall be identical to the terms and conditions of the current agreement. So um, I did say July, 2022, but uh, with the um, COVID-19 and uh, shutting down the lunch counters, the board at one of the one of the meetings did extend the contract by one year. So therefore we have until July 31st of this year to, you know, both sides do in order to, you know, uh, express a desire to terminate or to, to go into a, a new agreement. So um, staff is of the opinion that we should be uh, working with Center Plate going forward um, on a mutually agreeable terms and conditions of a, a new contract. Um, one of the challenges that they've been having has been housing on island, in particular for those first trips off the island trips. Uh, at this point, um, they do have housing for um, their people on the vineyard, um, but the uh, Nantucket has been a challenge. They've, they've had housing, but it's the, the rates have gone up so much that at this point, we're actually um, looking to provide them with one of our crew uh, crew rooms up above the terminal uh, to be able to staff, uh, so that way they would have people to staff that last trip to the island and the first trip off island. So uh, with that, I don't know whether Ryan or Dave have any, uh, would like to make a comment, uh, any comments before uh, you know, the full council weighs in? I can say something. Can you see me? Come so Ryan Cummings, uh, obviously most of you know Dave Obelander. He's been here for a long time. So we brought Dave back on to help us reset following COVID. I'm a 20-year hospitality employee. I've been in the center plate now 15 years. Um, so Dave's kind of helping us reset, get back in order. Uh, just some quick updates. Obviously, we talked about our sales have increased significantly since we've returned prior to last year. We've also gone up on increased wages over 30% from our pre-COVID rates for staff as we continue to hire. Uh, and we've invested significantly in J1s, which are now coming back, which are helping us obviously staff these all of these ships going forward. So we appreciate being long-term partners and look forward to uh, continuing to grow. Thank you. And, uh, I'd like to add something over if I could. Um, although we've had a number of name changes, I think it's important to point out that uh, um, Right up until this point, uh, and just recently, a number of the executive positions within the company actually have come from Boston Concessions Group, uh, including the CEO, who uh, who is now since retired. But again, most of the uh, most of the uh, a number of the executives, especially in this part of the country, were with Concession Group from, uh, from the beginning. And I personally like to thank everybody from Sports Council uh, and the members of the board, uh, board of governors, and management from the team. I've lived here and I've been here for 30 years and we've had a great relationship and we consider this one of our you know, most important accounts that we have. We'd like to, we'd like to, we'd love to stay on. Thank you. Uh, yep. Port Council members, any questions? No, just Mr. Chairman, just I want to thank them as well. Last time I saw them was when the, the Dunkin' Donuts idea came forward, which went away really fast. And um, like really fast, but that's okay. Um, we all learn, don't we? So, 
you guys do a great job. I'm very sorry about what happened over here with the housing and the, just all this unpredictable stuff that's happened. Um, and I feel for you and, and, and don't be concerned with, you know, people being angry and this and that during that period of time. The only thing I would say is, as far as that goes is, you know, on our route, you need to have something to drink when, you know, if this ever happened again, got to have some kind of a plan to have something to drink on the boat because we're, you know, two hour rides, not like over there in the lucky Island, seven miles. So um, <laughs> the other thing is when you guys get your back to sort of, you know, the new normal, that's going to, you know, it seems like you're pretty much there now. I remember asking you before about local food offers there's a lot of oh, coming out of COVID. What's happened is there's a ton of catering now. I mean, there's more food trucks on Nantucket. I don't even know what, I don't even, I just can't believe how many of them there are. And there's a lot of people doing stuff out of commercial kitchens. Um, it's a little different now. There's just more offerings. And I'm not saying that, you know, this is something you should do or have to do or whatever. I'm just suggesting a thought for you to have some local offerings on the boats in this, maybe just during the summer when the Eagle and the Witola are running, you know, that kind of, obviously I don't mean, mean it in the winter and even in the fall when we're doing boat switches, but when there's a consistent schedule with a lot of passengers, that's, that's pretty much all. I think you ought to look at that at some point, but thank you very much for doing what you do for us. Thank you. Absolutely, and we definitely uh, are interested in working with the local community and anything we can find. So definitely on the top of our mind coming out of COVID. Thank you. Any other questions? The one question I had is are the terms of the contract usually five years? Um, so over the, over the life of this, there's been various terms, three years, five years. We, we pretty much settled on five uh, on the basis that uh, there's a lot of capital investment that takes yeah. place in this yeah. in order to try to amortize that over a little bit longer period of time. Um, you know, we've, we've been fairly consistent lately with the five years. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Joe, the, Mr. Chairman, that's, yes. Bob just nailed it. They, 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 just before COVID, they did a bunch of stuff with like water filtration, you know, things to make just a lot of improvements. They have to spend a lot of money. This is like uh, somebody renting a town building for a restaurant. Like they, they're responsible for a lot of things. So that's Bob's point is really accurate. They're sort of us, they're sort of part of us. Once they're disembedded into the system, you know, they're sort of a, you know, like a licensed partner kind of thing. So well, I, was just anyway. saying, I, happen, I happen to read the contract Sunday afternoon while watching an awful Red Sox game. So. <laughs> <laughs> any other any other questions okay thank you. More exciting, oh, this so. requires this requires a vote <laughs> um, make a, a motion I make a motion to approve the recommend approval for the renewal of the Santa play contract do I have a second, I'll second. On that, please I'll second that one okay uh, mr. Lowell how do you vote aye mr. Cahill Cahill aye Mr. Murnia? Aye. Mr. Salito, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number C, uh, the 2023 summer operating schedule modifications. Yeah, so we just wanted to provide an update here um, with regards to the operating schedules. Um, as we noted back at the April board meeting, we've had some issues with the availability of our crew members specifically in the licensed deck officers group. And while we continue to try to remedy that situation, um, there are some service levels um, that, we, that we've needed to adjust and uh, will continue to need to adjust uh, for, the, for the remainder of June as, as it now appears. Um, so this, this past winter, um, the Steamship Authority sent 10 members of the crew who had obtained able-bodied seaman status to an eight week uh, class uh, to study to become pilot mates. 
And in following class, additional paid study time was provided to those individuals. Um, following the completion of the coursework, uh, the individuals submitted applications to the Coast Guard's documentation center to be tested. Um, in past years, the testing notification was a relatively fast turnaround, um, a couple of weeks at most. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, here we are close to three months later, uh, only four of the 10 individuals have been notified that they are, uh, um, that they can, they can test. The first of which I think was, uh, sitting yesterday, uh, for, uh, for the test. There's a five, it's a five part test. So the, the remaining six, um, uh, are awaiting notice. So until these, um, individuals can pass the test, uh, we'll, will remain constrained in terms of being able to provide the full approved operating schedule. And so uh, we've had to scale back, um, but some of it uh, we're able to fill in with some overtime uh, by crews, but they are limited in the number of uh, hours of overtime that they can do under their licenses. So, um, so at this point, uh, our, for the immediate time period, we'll continue to double crew the INO, which means four round trips a day versus five. Um, once we start getting busier, we'll be looking at seeing if we can uh, uh, overtime situ uh, for uh, additional the additional trip on uh, Fridays and Sundays. And uh, we've been double crewing the governor, which means four trips instead of seven. Although uh, we have been uh, the, the fleet's been uh, successful and uh, and the crew's been uh, willing to uh, fill in for overtime on those extra trips because we know that that fifth trip is a commuter trip. Um, but we, we ho hope that this situation, um, you know, we're looking at once we get some, some of these individuals tested that the situation will, um, uh, will improve some, but um, we do anticipate that at least with the INO that that double crewing situation will remain until at least the early parts of July uh, at this point. Um, and this is something that's not just particular to us, this is you know in an in industry-wide uh, situation where the documentation center is is backlogged and is taking um, a lot longer to uh, to process these applications than uh, they previously did. Um, so um, I don't know whether Mark Higgins, whether you have anything that you would like to add or we actually just got a fifth approved the test. Um, breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> yeah. um, and the Coast Guard actually put out a marine safety implement, what we call MSIB to that um, about five weeks ago, stating that uh, that there would be a backlog in, in the evaluations of, of all of these applications, license renewals, uh, document renewals, all of that. Um, and so, you know, we're working with the, the NMC. Uh, I've reached out directly uh, through them to uh, expedite it up to Coast Guard Command to see if we get get any uh, help in, in as far as uh, speeding up the process. So we are exploring all that avenues to get everybody uh, through the application process so that they can test. Is there any chance we could contact our congressmen or our senators to go to the command, the commandant of the Coast Guard to get maybe a little preference? Uh, we've already had, yeah, we've already had those conversations. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, the other thing I was noticing too, when you look on the schedule, it's showing that the governor is unavailable. When you go to make a reservation. Yeah, it, it depends upon the time period, because um, as I said, uh, some of this, we're, we're particularly on the governor, <laughs> we're, we're basically doing it two or three days out in advance. Uh, as to whether we're going to be able to get a crew to be able to run those extra trips. So if it's um, yeah. we we do have we do have the crew for today, and then we're they're working on arrangements for the re remainder of the week. Thank you. What else Any other questions? I'm sorry. John. Yes, thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, Bob, can you just boil it down in terms of the staffing issues? <clears throat> Are there any boats being canceled? Uh, there have been, yes. So the, the INO would normally be running five trips. It's only been running four um, since um, middle of May. And the governor um, 
has also been double crewed um, as opposed to it being uh, triple crewed uh, since the beginning of May. Um, you know, we are looking at service uh, service levels uh, going forward. Um, typically for the crews, we'd be putting out the whole summer schedule for them to be bidding on on which vessels, but we sat down with the uh, with the uh, uh, representatives from uh, the bargaining units and uh, agreed that we would just be doing it on a three week basis uh, well, until we uh, till all this uh, manning issue these manning issues have been uh, resolved. But um, you know, and we're also looking at other scenarios in terms of whether we need to be moving switching boats around and um, you know what happens if you know we have number of crew members that happen to go out and what will happen what will happen there so we're looking at uh, alternatives to uh, to the schedule but at this point uh, the schedule changes the ino being double crewed the woods uh the governor being double crewed uh with the first priority is to uh, get um overtime um for the governor to run those that extra those extra trips thank you any other questions no other questions will go to D staffing levels, although you may have answered some of those questions. Yeah. Well, uh, this next piece is more on the shore side. So oh. uh, the, the poor council on board had asked about where we're at on staffing. So uh, Janice has uh, some information here and uh, have her come up. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So as you can see on the slide, this, this slide of the blue column represents um, budgeted positions. The middle column, the green, is active, though currently filled, and the red um, indicates positions that are currently open. So as you can see, the, the columns that really I, are stand out of the parking lots, maintenance, um, and a little bit from Hyannis. So some of the struggles that we have are with parking lots and buses, bus drivers. That's um, it's, it's something that we've been struggling with. But I think overall, it's it, you know, I think back and I look at the at the this is really the time that we're in with, with regard to staffing, not just at the Steamship Authority. You know, we received many applications for many positions. Once reviewing it um, with the meeting with the managers, there are times when if applicants don't return phone calls, they don't show up for interviews. Or they come to the interview and they realize, you know, I, I can't pass a drug test or I'm just not interested. So it's not, again, it's not that we're, we're not receiving applications. It's just the overall interest. And I don't know. I really do believe that the unemployment rate is relatively low. But again, it's just the challenge with the parking and the bus. The bus drivers, the CCRTA, that, that often comes up that, um, we're, you know, we're not as competitive with the, the rates of the CCRTA, however, it's a completely, it's apples and oranges when you ask me with, the, with regard to the routing and the, and the, the schedule. So um, we ran a nice recruiting campaign with the help of Sean and his team. We're, we're social media, um, we're on all the LinkedIn's, the Facebook. Uh, we do a lot of recruiting on Indeed. We had radio, TV. So we're really, I mean, we really put a lot of effort into the recruiting strategy this year. So again, I really do think it's a sign of the times, but we're just, we're plugging away. And I'm not, um, I'm not overly concerned meeting with the managers, the terminal managers, they're, they're at a staffing level. Yes, I know that you can see from the slide that um, Nantucket is pretty well staffed. OPLUS is looking for dock workers. That's not uncommon. Um, reservations is doing pretty well. So, and maintenance is maintenance, the trades are, they continue to be a challenge to fill. But overall, I'm, I'm optimistic with the levels that we're at. Thank you, any questions? Uh, how, it sounds like it's not a competitiveness with salary issue. Is that true or how would you, you know, what, what would you say are the you know, top three reasons why it's so difficult to fill this position? Well, on the islands, it's uh, honestly, it's um, it's a matter of, of bodies, right? Um, and the ability to pass a drug test. That's the feedback that we get from the folks on the islands. Here, um, is the hourly rate, honestly, for the, the bus drivers is really what we, although we did increase their, their hourly rates um, and the parking lot attendance in Hyannis. So 
those seem to be, and that's that's an hourly rate issue. Yeah. But overall, I think we're doing well. No, I, I think you're good. It's, it's everybody's good. Yeah, it's just it's good. It's, it's, not your head. It's the same right. thing. It's a challenge. Yeah. It really is a challenge everywhere. Yeah. So I mean, on the on the Tricky. administrative yeah. side of the you know the admin type positions, those are easier, obviously, to fill. Right, we get a lot of activity on Indeed. We hire a lot from social media. So, any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Our communications plan. All right, um, I'll start and Sean can jump in here. So um, in your packet is a um, you know, a draft of a, um, you know, some of the communications plan that we uh, intend to uh, uh, be working on. Um, you know, it includes uh, follow up to, uh, um, you know, letters to the editor on terms of uh, to provide factual uh, replies to statements that are out there in the local media or, um, you know, ongoing letters. Um, we need to be looking at, um, you know, making sure that, you know, that the, the correct information is being, is being put out there. Um, we want to have more staff outreach with the, with the community, public events, whether it's chamber events or, um, you know, community events, uh, for instance, um, on Saturday, uh, Allison um, manned the booth over at the uh, Transp Highest Transportation Center here uh, with uh, the first of our uh, electric buses. Uh, it was called Recharge America. Uh, and, and so it was an electric uh, vehicle um, event and uh, we were pleased to show off what will be the first uh, electric bus here on the Cape. Um, and so uh, Allison, under uh, less than ideal conditions, man, man, the, man, the, man the booth. So, but those are the type of thing, you know, some of the things that we're, we're working on. Um, we also want to uh, be able to uh, make sure that we're, that the information is out there and be more proactive. Um, you know, uh, be promoting our performance records. So, for instance, in 2022. Uh, while the, the staff summary has it that it's fewer than one in 100, it's really closer to uh, the one in 200 of the authority trips were canceled because of mechanical. Um, it was um, uh, 0.53, I believe, was the uh, uh, the percentage of canceled trips. So, uh, uh, you know, the, the perceptions out there that we're cance canceling um, uh, consistently, and that's just not the case. Um, and so we need to be able to document that and have that out there. Um, and uh, I think the plan there will be uh, be reporting those on a, uh, a quarterly basis with the uh, uh, the media um, and putting it on our website and in the e-news. Um, we'll have uh, commonly, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, lost my, I lost my spot here. It's all right. <laughs> Uh, start continuing on from Bob's excellent start. Um, another thing that we're going to be working on is uh, basically fact sheets um, for items like our performance statistics project information, basically to get those to our employees, um, for council members and board members and other sort of key ambassadors for easy access uh, under the theory that if we don't, if we have the information, but we don't get it easily to people who can repeat it to the public, then shame on us. Um, another thing we're going to be working on is uh, better promoting our employee contributions to not only excellent service, but other community events. So we're going to work on a program to empower and encourage our employees for finding examples of those great customer service uh, moments and communicating them to me so that we can promote them. Um, we're going to work to increase communication of our island resident only service offerings. Um, and be a little bit more proactive about introducing new island residents to those things like the excursion program and Head Start um, and other items like that. Uh, Mark uh, Higgins and I are going to work uh, closely to get the communications function of the operation and communication center uh, beefed up a little bit to train them to be able to act as that communications hub so they can handle some of the things that um, 
need to be done after hours and on the weekends. And then also just work to get some new communication channels going. You know, we've talked a lot about the digital signage project that's going to be uh, dependent on capital funding, but there are things that we can do, like new partnerships with community organizations, senior centers, having open houses, that sort of thing, to be able to meet our uh, island residents and commuters where they are to get information to them and to uh, help them know more about our program. So obviously we might have some more recommendations as well after the review of the IT systems that's just getting started, but these are some top level things that are gonna be starting. Um, some of them have already started and some of them will be starting between now and the fall, I would say these will all be underway. So, and this was in response to uh, inquiries from um, board member Jim Malkin and John Cahill and Joe Salito and really all the board and port council members asking for a little bit more of a structure to uh, our efforts. So this is what we're working on. So I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions? Mr. Chair? Yes, John. Um, you know, in two years, three years as a port council member, I don't get very excited on port council meetings, but uh, this one I am. It's great, Sean, <laughs> that I see you're doing this. Um, and my hat's off to you and anything you can, you know, if you need any help or uh, any questions, give me a shout. But really, it's wonderful. And thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, just just to, again, uh, reiterate what John said, uh, especially going to the senior citizen centers. I usually go maybe once a month, once every two months uh, to the one in Oak Bluffs uh, to have discussions about town government and about uh, some legal issues that they might have. But that might be one of the things to do is every once in a while, stop by one of the uh, senior centers. And you will get a very, very good crowd. Because most of the people, a lot of the people that were at the uh, function uh, here on the strategic plan, most of them were senior citizens. Also, Sean, I liked your uh, letter to the editor for the uh, Falmouth uh, Enterprise. Yeah. It was very, very good. I'll second Thank that. You. Great. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Chairman and Sean, thank you. Thank you also for those comments, Sean, and <laughs> that we just got from the um, electric vacation last thing that we just got sent yesterday or the day before. That was very good. Uh, well said. Not confrontational, just telling the truth, which is what we, we need to do. Um, on this particular issue, I, I, I like this. This is something the town, you know, over here did too, you know, a few years back when things just, there's hot topics come up and all of a sudden there's all this stuff on Facebook and people are saying things that aren't true and it's very difficult to rebut that stuff. You know, it's, you get into an argument or it's better to just keep it simple. But I just want to say to everyone, you know, little things go a long way here. Little acts of kindness. Um, you know, you hear about, for example, like the wheelchair Where's the wheelchairs? They're all on one side, not the other, or something like that. No one could find one. That was a few years ago. But I'm just saying, those little things, the baggage cats on the fast boat, people bring their stuff home. That's, that needs to continue to work the way it does, okay? You get new people come in that don't know how things work, quote unquote, and they kind of say something that may not be the right thing somebody else said whatever so the more customer service friendliness that we can do in certain areas is as good as any plan you could ever devise okay you guys got your issues over there in the vineyard you don't like the boat late for five minutes we are different over here we just want the boat to run and 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 you know we we, you know, there's a lot of things that we're working on behind the scenes. You know, Allison and I discuss this stuff a lot, and Bob and Mark, I discuss with you about some of the things that we need to improve with the reservations and the mixed use boats and things like that. But that's bigger stuff. I'm talking about helping people. And somebody's in line and they need to get home, and, and they do a pretty good job with that. I hear that stuff comes back to us, Rob and I, when somebody's in line. And they get bumped in front of cars that don't have drivers when they're, you know, with family and sitting kids in the back seat. That kind of stuff happens, which is great. So I'm just saying that's not lose sight of the simple stuff as well as the large scale stuff. 
So anyway, thank you all for everything you're doing. Thank you, Matt. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, Rob here. Yeah, uh, I, I uh, agree with everything that the three of you just said. Um, I think this is really a, a, a good initiative. Um, I know we're going to talk about uh, Bob's uh, goals for next year as the last item on the agenda. And I've always been arguing that this needs to be one of our goals. And so this is going to make it easy. Bob, <laughs> we get to that point. So I think that's really good. Uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of other creative things that you guys can come up with along the way. Um, the one thing it does require, and this isn't intended to be a negative comment, but you know, every now and then something bad happens. And so we have to be just proactive about, you know, the communications associated with them. That way, you know, the, the public will feel that they're getting, a, you know, the, the transparency that they all want. So mm -hmm. that does put a little more pressure on that, I think. But I think this is a really good initiative. Yeah, and I mean, we we have great plans for when things, one of the first things I told Bob when I interviewed for this job is that man does job well, does not make the news. So I have a, a binder of plans for when things go wrong and we needed a binder of plans for when things go right. And that's yeah. what this is. Excellent. Good, thanks. Any other questions? <laughs> I, just say, I just want to say thanks again, Sean. Thank you all for your support. Appreciate it. Go to the treasurer's report. Morning, everyone. Are you going to go through all 265 pages? That's second. Slowly. <laughs> uh, so, the business summary for the month of April. Uh, so, for the month of April, uh, passengers for both routes combined were up 3.1%, uh, just under 6,100 passengers. The vineyard was up 1.8%, while Nantucket was up 8.1%, primarily due to the uh, ridership on the fast ferry being up 13%. Uh, both routes combined year to date are up 8.3%, or just under 44,000 passengers, and pretty equally split between the two routes as far as percentages go. Here's a graph showing the passenger comparison from this year compared to last year by month. Uh, this year's in orange, last year is in blue. Okay, so we have uh, vehicles carried for the month of April. On the vineyard route, we're down 0.9% or uh, 332 cars. Um, you can see the excursion fare of uh, vehicles are up while the uh, standard fares are down. On the Nantucket route, we're down 1.5% or 100 vehicles. In both routes combined, we're down 432 vehicles or 0.9%. A year to date, we're up 0.7% or just over 1,000 vehicles. And here's the graph comparing the month. Freight trucks uh, for the month of April, uh, total freight was up 1.8%. Uh, the vineyard was up 5.6%, while Nantucket was down 3.7%. And these are one-way vehicles. Uh, so total trucks increase for the year to date are up 7.8% and just over 2,000 free vehicles. And here's the monthly comparison. Here's the graph showing the vehicles, uh, average vehicles uh, per trip per day on the vineyard route. Um, Woods Hole cars are in blue. The trucks from Woods Hole are in orange. The uh, vehicle cars are in green leaving the vineyard and in yellow, the trucks leaving the vineyard. So here we can see the, the freight traffic leaving with uh, the bowl in the morning and coming back in the afternoon. And here it's uh, more clearly illustrated uh, by weekdays. And here's the weekend where we can see we, no, we nearly don't have the uh, freight traffic on the weekends as we do on the weekdays. And what we do have is generally in the morning come back in the afternoon. Cars parked for the month of April. We're up 12.2% for both routes combined with just over 1,100 uh, vehicles. Uh, the Nantucket route was up 15% and the Vineyard route was up 11.4%. Year to date, we're up just over 4,000 vehicles or 19.5%. Here's the illustration showing the uh, vehicles by uh, month, the cars parked. Trip summary report. Uh, so for the month of April on the vineyard route, we had four trips canceled for mechanical, zero for weather. Um, on the Nantucket route, we had zero trips canceled for mechanical and four for weather. Um, in purple, new for this month at Mr. Jones's request, we have the percentages of year-to-date of the uh, trip cancellations. 
So year to date of all the trips that operated on the vineyard route, 1.08% were canceled for mechanical and 1.1% for weather. Um, overall, as an organization through April, um, we have 0.8% trips canceled for mechanical and 1.52% for weather. Yes. Mr. Chairman, can I in, just interrupt for just sure, a that's... second to ask Mark a question? I, yeah, I kind of know the answer, but I just want, you know, so the, the traffic term, that means lack of, correct, Mark? Exactly. So if we have a boat that we can consolidate on another trip, yeah. um, then we, we just don't run it. Okay, because that, that's funky to look at if you don't know what you're looking at. So I just figured I'd ask to make sure that that's correct. So for instance, I believe it was last night we had the Woods Hole that we were able to consolidate the vehicles on another trip and not run the uh, boat. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Financial snapshot. So for the month of April, we had operating revenue of $9.8 million, um, which is lower than budget by uh, roughly $124,000. We had other income of $1.8 million. It was higher than budget by $1,776,000. And that was timing of grant revenue. And if you remember earlier, about two months ago, we were just the opposite, really. Um, and then it, it, just, it was a catch up. Uh, operating expenses of 9.8 million, low in the budget by 532,000. Putting this all together, we had a net operating income for the month of April of 1,721,000, which was higher than budget by 2.2 million. Uh, we were expecting an operating loss for the month of April, but because of the timing of the grant revenue, um, that put us to an operating income for the month. Uh, putting up this all together, we have a net operating loss of 8.4 million for the year. Um, which is lower than budget by about $6 million, and some of this is the timing, which we'll go over in some of the other slides. Okay, so the operating revenue here, we can see uh, for the month, we're down, the categories that were down was the rent revenue and the automobile revenue. The automobile revenue is a combination of the standard fares being down compared to uh, the previous year, which we based the budget on, and the Nantucket route, overall, their total passenger vehicles were down, and those are the uh, generally higher paying vehicles. Um, year to date, uh, revenue for operating revenue is uh, up 525000 and uh, other income, which is the grant revenue and the interest income, is up $1.7 million. Of that, um, roughly 900000 of that is grant revenue, and about 700000 is interest income. The interest rates are higher than what we projected. Here's a breakdown of the monthly operating revenues as well as the year-to-date revenues and where the categories fall. Operating expenses for the month, we're down $532,000. Um, fuel expense for the month was down $236,000. We budgeted uh, $4.07 and it came in at $3.03. Um, year-to-date, you see the maintenance expense is down $1.3 million. And uh, some of that is timing issue where this year um, we have some HVAC work in Vineyard Haven and some dock work that hasn't been done yet. And we're expecting that to be done later on this year. Here's a breakdown of the categories of the uh, operating expenses by month and for the year. Passengers for May. Um, we're up 10.1% on both routes combined, or 16,389 passengers. Year to date, we're up 8.7%. Vehicles on the Vineyard route for the month of May were up 3.8%, or just over 1,200 vehicles. Nantucket, uh, for these are all vehicles combined, it was up 6% of 441 vehicles. You can see both routes, you can see the standard fare automobiles are still lagging compared to the previous year. That's the first three weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's for the first three weeks of May, I'm sorry. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions anyone has on the uh, business summer John, the month of April. John. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mark, it might be for you or for Bob, but what is the uh, dock work that's going to be done in Vineyard Haven? There, there was some bollard work that was going to be done um, that wasn't done yet um, as far as the budget goes right now. Um, there's some HVAC work at the terminal building and some siding work that hasn't been done as well that uh, we're in the process of, uh, it might even be on the street as we speak out for bid for those repairs. They are on the, they are on the street. They should be open this month. 
Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Analysis of the, anything else, Mark? No, nope. unless anyone has any questions, I'm good on that. Thanks, Mark, great okay. job. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. So now we have the uh, analysis of the cost of service. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna spare everyone and not go through the almost 200 pages. So we'll uh, cut right to the chase on tab five. Can you move this to you? Make that a little bigger. Sorry, I'm just so cutting right to the chase on uh you know, consolidating the 200 page pages of this onto the, um, you know, it comes down to two pages and you can go up one page. That's all right. So in tabs, um, call, um, row C, we have the total cost of indirect and operating costs uh, on the vineyard route we're up compared to the previous year, um, just under $1.9 million. And uh, all things considering when you factor in fuel last year for both routes combined about $2.8 million in when inflation was, um, that's where we stood. Um, we had increased the number of trips in column D by 276. And that's really just a factor of the days where the operating schedule fell from the summer and the fall. Um, the cost per trip, um, we divide the cost um, in C by D and we get the cost per trips which they increased by $47. Um, if we can look at uh, row G, that's the number of passenger vehicles we carried, which were down 9,900. And in row H is the freight trucks. And for on the vineyard route, the growth was not with the big trucks, it was for the two space and the three space trucks, the smaller trucks. Actually, the four and five space trucks were down, um, as you can see in the column there from last year. Um, so once we put that together, um, as you can see, we have the total capacity, which increased uh, by 3,130 3, spaces, um, where we did increase the amount of trips by 267, um, but we don't have a boat that carries 10 car spaces. It's really just a factor of the way the schedule and what boats were on the run. In 2022, the island home was off out of service uh, longer than it was in 2021. So when we factor all this in, uh, we have an occupancy rate went from 82.6% to 81.8% on the vineyard route. So we um, actually had more uh, excess capacity in 2022 versus 2021. But if I may, uh, that's for the for the entire year in both directions. So there's season, seasonality Different. takes into, a, yeah. into account that traffic going one way versus the other uh, certain times of the year. So we've always looked at around 80 to 85 percent as being at maximum capacity. Right. Let's slow down a little bit. So row O, we uh, total revenue was down by 205,000 on the vineyard route. Um, we can see the passenger revenue was up, um, but the standout there is the standard fare automobiles compared to the prior year were down $1.7 million. And that's reflective of the, uh, the quantity of the vehicles traveling. So then when we go to um, so the estimated cost per car, so we factor all of a sudden, we take the amount of vehicles that travel that the average cost to carry a car this year was $69.94 compared to last year at $68.10. So there's $1.84 more expensive for us to carry a vehicle. And if we can go down to X. Um, so we can see the, the last year in 2021, the automobiles covered 101.7% of their uh, cost. Well, this year we're uh, under that number because that's relative to the standard fares coming down right 96.8%. Um, the standard fares covered 133.6% of that cost, while the excursion fares covered 33.1%. Uh, pretty similar in line to what last year was, a little variation. So looking at the Nantucket run. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So there we can see the cost of their operating uh, schedule went up to uh, $2,960,000. That's in cost of the fuel as well as the way how the dry dock shaped out, which folks got um, allocated to what route. 
Um, we did increase the trips by 109 last year, and that's a result of when the schedules fell. Um, the cost for trips did increase by $406 last year. Compared to Virginia route, they have a longer route, and the fuel cost is more impactful on each trip. Um, looking at the vehicles the, on Road G, you saw the standard fare similar to the Nantucket route did decrease. So then we go down a little bit further. So we get the occupancy rate um, on row and, and uh, we went down 1.1% on the Nantucket route from 86.4 to 85.3%. We did increase the capacity by 4,210 car spaces, uh, which is really, when you look at the amount of trips, it's relative to the Sankey or Gayhead running those uh, in the shoulder season schedules. Here again, we can see in O, the standard for automobiles on the Nantucket run were down and revenue similar to the uh, vineyard route. And the revenue this year on the Nantucket route was down to $262,000. So the cost of a vehicle, a car space on the Nantucket run went up $13 from 2021 to 2022. So that's in uh, section V. I went from $155 to $168. Um, the average revenue per vehicle in the Nantucket route, the standard fare went up 59 cents um, and the excursion fare went up uh, 43 cents. And here we can see the, um, this year, the standard fares in 2022 covered 100, almost 144% of the cost while the excursions covered 36.1%. And uh, with that, I'd be happy to uh, as an overview, what we do is we take all the revenue related to the vessels, we take all the direct and indirect costs uh, for the vessels, put them together, and that's how, and then we start breaking it down on a uh, categorical basis. And so any questions? Be, have to answer any questions. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Matt. Thank you, Mark, for that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I'm just gonna pretend that I'm just a regular resident watching this meeting, seeing that breakdown mark and the first thing that jumps out at me as just a regular person is the 85 percent occupancy right when you get told there's no room till september 17th and this is the stuff that i talk to you guys about constantly i talk to allison about this i talk to you guys about this it's it's i realize why this stuff happens but if I had to explain that to someone, they'd think I was off my rocker, okay? So you guys over on the other island, totally different scenario, but, and reasons why, but on our side, this is why I am like pushing the gas pedal down further on this whole H boat, T boat stuff. When we get these new boats, those numbers should go up because there's not going to be any, you know, weird stuff with the, um, syst you know, the, the computer system to book on these boats. It's not going to be the draft stuff. You're not going to have any of these problems. It's going to be the woods hole that you back up on, as Allison coined. I think that's a pretty good way to explain what these boats are, the woods hole that you back up. And that's going to make a huge, huge difference in, how we can fix some of our existing problems that we have that we just can't seem to, we can't be like the airlines and have every seat taken and there's one extra person that's got to get a free ticket for the next flight. We just can't do that. But we can do better, but we'll never be like the airlines. And um, so that leads to Another little point that I, that Mark, actually, we talked about this years ago is the underutilized trips and the ones that are running that have to run, not the ones that we can cancel that we talked about in the statistics with the traffic pot, like certain ways to promote weekend excursions, let's say on some of those trips that are just sort of almost half full just because of the nature of the trip and making those trips available to locals once we get these boats that don't have that issue with the, with the potential draft and they can't 
drive with their car and they have to take the fast boat and the drive off and all those crazy things that happen to somebody over here when they can't ride with their car. Because the way things are trending on Nantucket now, there is actually a new lifestyle sort of movement back to sort of the old way. People like to go in their car more than you think, depending upon what they're doing. Going off for the night, coming back the next day, those things are, are people want to do that. It's not all fast ferry. It's, there's a mix here now. So just bringing that up as part of, you know, the overall sort of strategic thinking for the next, you know, six or eight months when we get these new boats coming online in May, hopefully. So anyway, thank you for everything you're doing. So Matt, to your point, and as Bob said, the 84% is very high because we have trips that are naturally, they're almost like deadheads. For instance, Memorial right. Day weekend, everything goes yeah. over. And then yeah. it, the boats are, you know, basically one-way direction um, on Sundays in the off-season for you. No one's leaving the island on that last freight boat off-island where everyone's coming back from the weekend. Um, for yeah. example, on the vineyard, uh, the 930 trip is not very attractive coming off the island. You know, yeah. it's an under, no, you know, I, I numbers are baked in yeah. to keep them that. Yeah. Where you're not I understand that. I didn't yeah. mean to gloss over those parts. I know that you can't fill up the boat that can't just impossible to do. I get that. I'm just talking about more general, you know, increasing the numbers a little bit more, you know, when, when, when we can get more booking and more um, availability by natural, you know, increase. Does that make sense? With without having this draft issue stuff happening. So thank you. Sorry, I I, I know I should have said that at the outset. <laughs> John. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mark, fascinating. I really like that analysis. Um, and I would like to print it out and uh have the opportunity to pick up phone and call you if I could. I don't want to take up people's time today. Um, but one question, could you just define the occupancy rate, how that formula works? You were just Are moving we being, too fast. So the occupancy is we take the total, you know, we factor in what boat ran, what the capacity of the boat. So all the operating trips times their capacity, that is the overall capacity we have. And then we take out how many spaces were used. So our car was one space, a delivery trucks, two space, a semi store space. So we, we factor in all the spaces that actually travel and it's simple, simply by dividing what actually traveled by what could have traveled. And that's how okay. we come up with the occupancy. And uh, right. I'll get you a hard copy out tomorrow in the inter and then have it at the Vineyard Haven terminal for you. Oh, well, you can email it. Um, okay. Do that. Um, right. And I'll follow up with a call. Thank you. Okay. I, I, I know Mark what Nat was talking about because uh, the only reason I ever went on island this talk was to see how they're talking about the steamship authority and somebody had a complaint on Sunday a Memorial Day weekend that there was only seven or eight cars on one boat leaving the vineyard saying how come there's no reservations but they don't understand nobody wanted to leave the vineyard on Sunday morning. So very common Joe like in Woods Hole that you go to noontime all those six or eight trips in the morning and Sunday morning in the off season you can't you could put them all onto one boat and then once you get yeah. to two o'clock they're all sold out you know so that's where that number is never going to hit 100 so it's you know like bob said you know when you're getting in the mid to 80s you know you're really effectively at usable 100. The, the other question i had was on page 222 you were talking about corpses there's no <laughs> there's no 222. <laughs> oh no well, 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 the tariffs, yeah yeah, yeah. You go all the way there. Yeah, the we tariff. fixed that years ago. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we do not charge. Yeah. Do you do you still charge? No, the uh, no, not for that. The, it goes in the hearse. It's fine. Okay, because there was a good. point when I thought you were charging. But, no, we there was. Time. I was informed. I was informed of that by a mutual friend. Yeah, there was there was a time years ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh that's true that's, Joe, true. that's an old one that's a good one Joe that's a long old story that's before my tenure here Joe <laughs> he was very worried about that I'm mutual friend Mark <laughs> any other questions of Mark I, I had one uh, Mark go ahead, Rob. I, can't, I can't see you Rob go ahead Rob 
Usually buried in here somewhere is the allocation between the two islands. Is the cost allocation, yes. And, and, and that, how that balances or doesn't balance in the high yeah, level. The, sure. So the total, I always find that fascinating. Yeah. So the revenues for the two islands, um, the vineyard did 58.1%, Nantucket did 41.9% for the revenue. The expenses, um, allocated expenses were 57.2 and 42.8 respectively. So they're very close. There wasn't a big, like a 5% swing. Right. So they're within, you know, basically the vineyard goes up a half a point and the comes down, you're the same. That's pretty close. Yeah. So the net operating for, for the budget, um, you know, they, they uh, came in pretty close, 9.2 versus 7.2. So no one island is subsidizing. No, this, not like in the past where you have a wild swing back and forth. They were pretty even as far as uh, costs related to expenses this year. When you take into account the non-service income, which is primarily license fees, uh, it actually yeah. does, it does it does swing it uh, slightly to the Nantucket side. That there, um, the, the revenues from the Nantucket uh, the Nantucket operations is uh, more than what the uh, the cost of that service is. So. non offer, yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Let's go. All right. Thank you. We'll go on to uh, old new business item A. Leave <sighs> that for Terrence and uh, Janice. Hello again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that time of year again for Bob's performance evaluation, his favorite time of the year. Um, so yesterday I emailed out to all of the uh, port council members and the board of directors. To their steamship authority email account the performance evaluation which again this year is in the form of a, a google doc so if if you wanted to go to your personal email just just let me know but it, it will be in your steamship email uh, and also included in that email is a memo the memo that we sent out which really outlines the process the whole process for the the um the delivery of the performance evaluation so the Port Council will be prepared to present their evaluations to Bob in July. Um, actually, the, obviously, the, the Board of Directors as well. So um, as we've done it in years past, each Port Council and Board member reviews Bob independently, not communicating with any other members. Um, and then they will present their performance evaluation, like I said, at the July meeting. Are there any questions? It, is there any chance we could do that? If, this is uh, Joe Salito. In August, I know myself, and I know that uh, same with John. We're, we're probably not. We're very, very busy in the summertime here, especially in the island. I don't know if that's possible or not. Matt, how do you feel about that, John or, or Rob? Whatever works with you guys, I guess. Um, what, what What is the deadline on that one? Yeah. July 1st, probably, because we have to have it ready for the July meeting. Right. We're already, uh, we're already in June 6th. I mean, Bob's not, like, leaving tomorrow, so. <laughs> it's not, not like a conference. Don't you tell me. Don't go anywhere, Bob. I thought you were. Right where you are. Any I mean, whatever stronger? works. I mean, do we, do we have to have it at an exact timeline for the poor council meeting? Uh, or is it for the board meeting in July, uh, which is later? It, it, if I may, I, I think the only the issue we'll have to look at is, uh, I, my memory is, is that the August meeting, we're going to be doing yet another joint meeting for strategic planning. Um, uh. I think yeah. that I think that was. <laughs> I'm in practice and removing my audible sigh and I just that. <laughs> so that's one. That's not bad. Yeah, and the other the other mention is you know the the board wants the feedback from the board council before their right. deliberation. So um, okay. if we can keep the July date, okay. that would, okay. be, right. would be best. Okay, that's fine. We can do the August meeting in hyannis now. Well, that's what I'm going to ask next, but it's up to, you know, I have to do what I can, that's all. Oh, 
When's that August meeting? What's what would that be? The joint? It would be at the poor council meeting joint, or would it be at the other one? It would be uh, like what we did before. It'd be following the poor council meeting, um, a joint meeting, okay. and uh, I'm just trying to get a calendar up here to yeah. take a look. So it'd be the eighth. No, the first. Right. Oh, it's uh, the first. Yeah, the August August eight, yeah. meeting is set for the fifteenth right now. So the joint meeting is the poor council and joint meeting are August one. Yeah, August first would be the first Tuesday of the month. Wow. So it'd be August first, sir. Would that be a hybrid meeting? Oh, she, he just said we're doing the Julia Novak stuff then too. So we have to be in person. I can't make an August meeting. What about moving it to the eighth, Bob? We do that. We do that a lot. I mean, when it's the first of the month like that, sometimes we move things around. I, I mean, I'm just. I, I, am I am I reading John correctly that either way it's going to be problematic? Yes. Oh. You know, August is our peak of the peak. Mm -hmm. um, to travel to Hyannis is going to be a big challenge. I mean, I can do it if I need to, but if there's a um, way to move that around. Mm -hmm. we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk I mean, and uh, we'll, we'll look at the schedule and see. You don't have to have it in Hyannis, Bob. I mean, I'm just, I'm, you know, as long as you give me a minute, I mean, I'll get on the 630 and I'll be zipping down to Falmouth. I mean, it isn't too bad. You know, I mean, if that makes it better for them, you know, for John and, and Joe, I, I can certainly zip down to Falmouth, you know. No problem. It's up to John. I don't. It doesn't. No way we could fly yeah. you and uh, you and Rob. Fly you guys in from Nantucket. If if I may, can we? Uh, why don't we? Uh, I'll follow up with uh, Julia and uh, members of the poor council and board as to scheduling options and uh, okay. where where we would get the uh, uh, the best results. Thank you. And those Going out those of little. Those little sandwiches were pretty good, Bob, the last meeting. So. Okay, so any more new calls your business? <laughs> <laughs> One other thing. Item number, going to item ahead. number five. The, what, uh, wait, 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 Joe. Joe, oh, sorry, Joe. Sorry, 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 go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering uh, if it's possible to get uh, a summary of your perceived accomplishment on each of the line items in your goals in advance of us doing this so that we have some some input. So Janice has been um, requesting that I get that done, <laughs> shall I say? <laughs> and so I'm working on it. I anticipate getting it out here in the next week or so. That would be great. Thank you. Sorry, Rob. I, is there any way, Sean, that he could always be on the screen? Because I can't see him raising his hand. Uh, I don't know that he... Well, we can work on it for the next meeting. We're on this. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have any comment? Um, I, I do have one more one more thing, if I may. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I just want to introduce, um, uh, in the uh, earlier, I mentioned uh, Stephen Coleman. Uh, so, Stephen, if you want to come up. Uh, Stephen Coleman has uh, joined us. Um, he's going to be... Uh, um, has, has joined the authority as um, the uh, incoming uh, director of the MIS uh, group uh, upon um, Kurt Van Riper is uh, indicated he's going to be retiring at the end of the year. So we brought Stephen in uh, to uh, put a transition, transition here and uh, I just wanted to make the introductions to him, and uh, I'm sure was next time we uh, get together in person that uh, we'll introduce you in person. Welcome aboard. Thank you very yeah, much. Congratulations and welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anything else, Bob? Uh, that does it for me. Okay. Going to item number five, public comment. anyone's got public comment, you can hit the raise your hand icon. And I don't see any. 
Okay. Not seeing anything else. Anything else from any of the board members? Leon, Leon, yeah, hold on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Leon. I just want. I just wanted to congratulate uh, you, Sean, for putting together that package on the communication about what's happening at the steamship. And to me, it's a very positive thing. I know Jim Melkin and I had spoken about it, and so with John and and, and with Joe. And I think that's going to go a long way to help correct some of the misinformation that's been put out about the steamship authority and what it's doing on a regular basis. Here, 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 here. Yep. The only other Thank question, you. the only other question I had with respect to the new website and the name change, I just question whether or not they're going to increase the administrative overhead based on the new corporation and what's happening with the numbers there. So I'd look at those as you start continue to negotiate with the steam yeah, with the of, uh, contractor it's a good point leon but none of that is none of those rates have changed throughout the duration of the project great so. thank you thank you leon any other questions don't see any leon? okay with that can i have a motion to adjourn so moved second mr lowell Aye. Mr. Cahill? Cahill, aye. Mr. Murnia? Aye. Mr. Thank Salillo, you. Aye. Thank you. Thank you Thank all very, very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.